Hey everybody, I am going to be using um, Brief Strategic Family Therapy today with Mark and Kim and going to try and use circular questioning um, and reframing as well. So welcome back, Mark and Kim. I appreciate you both coming in today. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So how has it been going, going the last week with, with both you at home with Lisa? Well, me and I have been at home more often mm -hmm. and better. I see changes in her, changes in our interactions, um, how I respond to her and how mm -hmm. she responds to me. Um, there are some things yeah. that still I feel like we have to work on. Right. Um, that they're not okay. She's still smoking. Right. And she's but still missing school. So some some improvements, at least in the communication department. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. She's um, been better at communicating with us, and we've been better with communicating with her. Good. So in the last the last week, um, I want to hear from both of you. But so, um, what when Lisa is acting out? Mark, how have those interactions been going specifically? Um, if you can think of any times, you said because she still is missing school, um, how those played out at home? Well, the other day, um, she came home from school at the same time. Um, she seemed kind of tired. Off. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't talk to me or anything, went to her room and then I get a call from school that she wasn't there for her last period. Mm -hmm. So I figured out that she was smoking with her friends, like she usually mm -hmm. does. So I went to her room and I didn't yell or anything, but I, I was pretty upset and I told her what happened and she tried to lie. Um, so it didn't go right. that well in that moment. <clears throat> okay. Um, and so, so Kim, how have, have you had any of those interactions with her? Um, I know you sometimes you're not not there quite as often, but I'd like to hear. On the weekends, I'm there. The weekends, and so yeah. it allows me that one on one time. And and she does try to pit the two of us against each other. Mm -hmm. They'll ask Mark something or and then come ask me if he says right. no or or vice versa. And um I think we're asking a lot more questions like who, what, when, where. Right. So I think that has been beneficial. And so I, I know things aren't going to be like fixed, like, because mm -hmm. it took a while for the problems to arise, right? So it's going to mm -hmm. take a while. So I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing, um, right. but I'm not home with her all day. So whereas Mark, you know, when they were doing during COVID at home studies, he was mm -hmm. with her constantly. Now they're back to school. So it's not, you know, quite as intense and he does get in a break, but the behaviors are still there. Right. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're getting some break, Mark. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, how does she you respond when you're asking those who, what, where, when questions? Because that seems like it may be a slightly more regular um, line of questioning that you guys are posing to her. So Mark, would you like to start since you, you know, you're really the one spending the most amount of time with Lisa? Definitely. Uh, when I ask <clears throat> her, most of the time, she'll be honest. So mm -hmm. that's why I know which friends I don't like too much and mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, other times, she tries to avoid it or doesn't want to reply. Right. Um, doesn't want to talk to me, wants to talk to mom. Right. And Kim, on your end of things, um, when you are in a position where you're asking those questions, how is, how is she responding to you? At first she was defensive, but you know, I explained to her that that's part of my job. It's to parent her mm -hmm. and to make sure she's going to be safe. And so I think it's important <clears> that <throat> we implement that. So we do know all those answers and we're right. not 
you know, just letting her do what she wants all the time mm -hmm. with who she wants. Cause she knows we don't approve of, you know, certain friends. And so this allows us to know all the right. details we need to know, you know. Absolutely. Um, and it sounds, it sounds like both of you have been doing, <clears throat> you know, a great, great job of following up with her since we've, since we've been meeting together that you're really hammering home the who, what, where, when um, with her, you know, so she, she's held accountable. And I'm, I'm also curious to hear kind of, you know, when, when you do get pushback from Lisa, um, she's, you know, being a little more sassy, butting heads a bit. Um, how, how do those conversations go between the two of you when, you, when you're discussing that behavior? I try not to bring emotion into the conversation because that kind of, and then I think that kind of muddles it. And then, then kind of seeing it from her perspective, mm -hmm. because I was once a teenager too, like the rest of us. And so we have to bring ourselves back to that perspective to really understand because it is a, a difficult time you know, during our lives, that teen, those teenage years. And so there's a lot of angst and, and, you know, not, you know, they're finding themselves. So it's important that I understand that and be supportive. So I think it's just, I think when I stand back and actually feel that way mm -hmm. and allow her to express, I don't interrupt. She's mm -hmm. able to express what she needs to all it. And then We've learned that when she, you know she's done, then it's my turn. So right. there's no over talking. So that allows good right. communication too. And and so between um, Kim, you and Mark, when you're having conversations about Lisa's resistance and her you know continued behavior, how do those go between you two? So you, Kim, you and Mark. Mark, what do you think? I maybe at first it wasn't the best mm -hmm. but I feel like with every session we learn a new way to communicate with each other and to learn from each other and to learn what is going to work and what it's not going to mm -hmm. work um, sometimes it's better just to leave it for later just to make a little date for that conversation sometimes we have to talk about it because it's an emergency I have to be there all the mm -hmm. time. so I think that it, it's good now uh, we're working on it what do you we'll think see. yeah I think it is I think we've worked hard good I mean it it sounds like it's going so much better <clears throat> on the communication front between between the two of you in particular. Um, and I wanted to offer up, you know, kind of my interpretation of, of what's going on because it seems to me, you know, in some ways Lisa's behavior really has brought you two closer together. And um, in my interpretation, it kind of seems as though in some ways she's acting out as a way to keep the family together um, as, you know, as backwards as it may seem, how she's doing it. And I'm curious to kind of hear both of your thoughts on that briefly before we wrap up. How does that seem, seem to you? It seems feasible. It yes. does. It seems feasible. We've never thought that direction though. Mm -hmm. I haven't. What about you, Mark? No, no. as soon as she said it, I kind of felt like that's exactly why this is happening before we were always fighting and mm -hmm. now we're so much closer to each other and things are slowly getting better. Right. Well, you know, as we move forward, I, I would just encourage you both to keep, keep that in mind um, during your interactions with Lisa. And so, you know, when your tensions may be running high and, she's being incredibly frustrating. I would just encourage the two of you to, uh, you know, take a, take a deep breath and think about kind of 
maybe why she's acting out. Um, and I'd love to hear how that goes, goes over the course of the week and we can talk about it during the next session. Um, so thank you both for coming in today. It's good, thank great you. to see you again. Thank and you. I'll see you both next week. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.